It's a time for more packages from China. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the nostalgic classic arcade games. So we're back with a new game system from AliExpress and I was just really curious what are we going to get with this tiny device because this is a really tiny mean machine. The device itself looks like a weird Famicom mini version, but it comes with PlayStation 1 controllers. That makes no sense whatsoever. But what are we going to get? That is of course the main question. So first of all, I really like what I'm seeing with this. Look at this, how tiny it is. So I must say that they're quite creative. Like these are not like knockoffs that we have seen before. So let's see what we're going to get more in the box. We're going to get two wireless controllers. And as the package says, it's in 2.4 gigahertz edition. So what are we going to get more? We're going to get the dongle for the controllers. Then we're going to get ourselves the micro USB cable and ooh, the toilet paper manual deluxe edition. Okay, so that basically explains like what you need to do with it to connect it, stuff like that, quick explanations. And let's see an HDMI cable because this thing has an HDMI functionality. So quite interesting. I'm curious what we can play with it and how good it is. So the system itself, let's take a close look at that first. Okay, so you can see like when you compare it with my hands, this thing is really tiny. So the weird thing is like there is no on or off switch. This doesn't do anything. So at the back, we're going to get two USB connections, an HDMI out. We have here the TF card and then we're going to get the uh, micro SD. That is basically with only 32 gigabyte over here. So that's it, an original SanDisk, or I think it's an original one, and the micro USB. And with this, we can basically connect it with a 5 volt power supply. Right now, like rubbery feet on it, here it says already like needs 5 volt 1 amp. So that is not a lot, but so far I can see there is no, yeah, there's absolutely like no on and off switch. So that's a little bit of bummer and weird. Okay, so we're going to get the configuration of one dongle and two controllers. I'm only going to <laughs> basically like show you one over here. But the controller quality, this is more like the medium quality. Because the lower and like the cheap to the cheap have like these really weird joysticks, like it's kind of weird plastic. And this thing has some rubbery grip on it. The touch itself, the D-pad, but also the buttons, it's not comparable with the original PlayStation 2 controllers, but it is better than basically most that I've reviewed here. Okay, two AAA batteries are needed for powering it on. We're having an on and off switch over here. And let's do the smell test. <sighs> It doesn't smell a uh, chemical at all. So that's a very positive thing. But let's take a close look. Let's plug in the device in my television and just see what we're going to get. Okay, so let's take a close look at the menu itself. Plugging it in is like super easy, but the only thing I don't like, there is no on and off switch. When you're going to plug it in the USB power, it's going to be powering on. And there is no way of powering it off. Kind of weird, if you ask me. But when the system has been booted up, what you're going to get is one big gigantic pile of a list. A little bit of a bummer because same with the, let's say the first generation of Pandora's boxes. So pressing the R button, here we're going to see like an overview of all the system that we can play with this. So quite a, let's say, big compatibility. Arcade, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, PlayStation, New Geo, Mega Drive, Game Gear, Game Boy Color. And if you're going to basically going over here, you're going to even have like Super Famicom. It's a good, in my opinion, a little bit of a basic yeah, list of systems because nowadays we're having way better options with different systems. Then we're going to get the save options. Quite interesting that we have like a separate section for the saves. Then we're going to get favorites. Scanning, this means like basically you can search for a game. Kind of weird saying like scanning. Okay, when pressing the X button, we can go to the list over here. Then we can choose our game. But it doesn't really say like what what platform it is. So we're having like two Mortal Kombat 4, but no idea. Like, is it for the Game Boy? Is it for the PlayStation 1? No idea. So then we're going to get the files. The files is basically where you can mess around with the files, delete stuff. Settings, language, display. What I do like about this option here, we can put it in the original XPS ratio. And then we're going to get clear. So with clear, I want to say like, don't clear the data, don't mess around with it. The same goes with store and with version here, you can see like what version you're having. So this is like, like a quick overview of the menu and what you're going to get. Kind of clunky and basic, but it will work. But especially the file, this first list of files, this is like a freaking nightmare. Okay, so first let's try the controller just to see how the D-pad responds. I must say, like, I am surprised to see that it is quite good. Really? 
It's not my favorite controller, I can say that, but and overall, it's not bad. So when it comes to the controller, the actual gearing they give you like a very, very nice one. Good connection, no input lag in my opinion, and the D-pad is very good. The system itself is running RetroArch on the background, and this is what you're going to get when pressing select and start when we boot it up again. So here you can see like we have some options with RetroArch. So far I can see I cannot get into the big menu where we can maybe change out emulator, stuff like that. Yeah, so this is what you're going to see. We can have a quick load, quick save, change the inputs. So there are a lot of things you can change out, that's very good. But you need to go every time to this menu, start, quick RetroArch, and then you can go back to this main menu. Okay, the first game I wanted to try is Super Famicom. So when I was going through the menu, I already noticed some lag here and there, especially in the audio. So I can just hear some crackling noise, and no, that is not actually like the speaker is going down. No, this is absolutely like an emulation issue. Still, the frame rate of the gameplay is quite good. But let's be honest, like nowadays we can play so many of these games. But slowdowns in this game is absolutely unforgivable, especially with the 16-bit stuff. Okay, so next up let's try some arcade games. And I just wanted to see how fast and how responsive this game is. So with this you don't see or hear any lags. I did see some flickering with the shadows when I choose a character, but beside that, kind of very good performance and overall. Okay, so let's go back to the display settings. Equal proportion, that's what I love to call it. So let's see what happens. Let's try to boot up some games and just see how it looks now. Okay, so another issue that occurred when making this video and just wanted to show you is like when I booted up an NES game, sadly, I just going to get again the welcome screen when booting it up and it was just stuck. The only thing that it does is basically showing this. Just wanted to point out, so even the games, as high as possible and doesn't boot up. But you can see that the express ratio option seems to be working fine. And finally, found a freaking game that actually boots up. Fun fact, like, because of the PlayStation controller, we have more than <laughs> two buttons that we're actually going to need an 8-bit. But they basically map the other ones to turbo buttons. So it's quite interesting. Okay, so next up, let's try Sega Mega Drive. And it seems to be that they map the buttons quite strange. That's of course because we're using a PlayStation controller for actually like normally having like a 3 or 6 button controller. But so I can see and hear this works very damn good. Oh, love the shield. Okay, so next up let's try PlayStation 1. PlayStation 1 I noticed with some part of the game it still struggles. So. PlayStation 1 is not like a very good thing to play on this, I can already tell you that. So actually a lot of parts of the game plays very well. I still notice some hiccups here and there, something I find quite unforgivable when it comes to this. The D-pad and the analog stick seem to be working fine. Alright, so next up let's try another game. This is Wipeout, but still I'm getting this feeling the game is stuttering here and there. I don't know if it's noticeable on the camera, but I find it's not having like a very smooth experience when it comes to playing PlayStation 1 on this. I wouldn't be surprised that the system they are selling that is just basically like a really low powered piece of hardware running with some retro arc. But let's see what is inside this machine. So when you're looking at the overall performance, it's okay. It's running quite a basic piece of software. It's like a weird interface combined with the retro arc. And I'm just going to be honest, I'm not a big fan of it. And also when holding this, <laughs> when I wanted to do a teardown, I can feel like there's coming a lot of heat from the plastic case. So this is just purely like passive cooling. There is no active fan in this. Damn, they tighten up these screws very hard. So getting this thing up, but it's going to be quite a challenge. Okay, let's see if we can remove this one too because I noticed the screws have been tied up and sometimes they're messing up the screws in general. All right, let's open this up. Let's break the seal. Mm. All right, so let's see. So there is only one PCB inside. It's always important to remove the SD card. 
tie the bottle otherwise you're going to destroy it all right screw number one and nice remove screw number two over here that's more plastic than it's basically actually going to be in normal piece to be inside okay so let's see what we're going to get here and so that's quite interesting what kind of specs they are using so over here i'm guessing this is the ram chip or yeah because they are using mostly storage they're using the sd card but let's take a close look at the rock chip so they are using the rock chip rk3128 so i'm kind of recalling it correctly like they're using the faster rock chips nowadays and handhelds from Embernic. So it's quite interesting chip this is a very old one already so here you can see the production date is 2021 so this basically is completely redesigned with this like say slower chip but they will explain like why i don't find it a very cool, good let's say emulation for playstation one it's powerful enough don't get me wrong but it's maybe a combination of the right emulator yeah it's a really cheap to the cheap cheap device and the way how they made it too so yeah this is what you're going to get in the inside doggy Shh. no doggy stop no stop barking but okay guys so this is what we're going to get with this nostalgic classic arcade games what a weird name for a system yeah so this thing looks kind of a weird deformed mini classic nes and it plays actually like a lot of games beside nes so when you're looking at the console itself i think it's a really fun divine yeah it's just a rock chip inside it's a basic piece of hardware like the menu is kind of clunky like it is not really something special so when it comes to the emulation performance and what you're going to get yeah it's quite interesting because these things are not super expensive but i'm happy to see like actually going to give us some good controllers because yeah this is actually like a very fine control to play with so that's a very positive thing yeah let me know what you think of this one thank you for watching consider subscribing hit that little bell become a wicked family and i will see you in the new next video